So, yeah, I'm joined today by Asel Luzaraga, uh, who's a fiction writer in the Basque language and also in Castilian Spanish. Uh, Asel's also a punk musician and anarchist activist. He was arrested in Chile in December 2009 and falsely charged with carrying out uh, terrorist bombings. Those charges were absurd. He wasn't in the country for any of them. Um, but on the basis of evidence that was later found to have been planted by the authorities, Asel was convicted of uh, possession of bomb-making materials. Um, he'd already spent 220 days in prison by that point, um, and so that was the length of his sentence, and he was uh, immediately deported and put on the Interpol list of convicted terrorists. Um, he's obviously been campaigning against that conviction uh, ever since. Um, Asel's involvement in punk culture, his anarchist politics and his uh, Basque nationality were all held up by the Chilean authorities as evidence of Asel's guilt. And indeed, this is in keeping with the uh, repression that's been waged by the Chilean authorities against anarchists and others, um, not least in the, in the pre-pandemic uh, protest movements that had been in sweeping the country in the early part of this year and, and late last year. So speaking today with Asel should be enlightening in terms of the uh, relationships between punk and anarchism and the global connections of those networks and uh, the repression that so many of our comrades have been targeted with in recent years and indeed throughout the history of, uh, of the anarchist movement. So Asel, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so... Yeah, can you tell us a bit about the um, connections between um, the, the Basque language, Euskara, uh, and the culture and the punk scene or, or anarchist movement there? Yeah, well, um, I think that uh, there's a um, closer connection between Basque language and Basque culture and punk, and punk scene, at least uh, more... Um, fluent connection and more well-known connection. In the 80s, uh, punk arrived to the Basque country. Uh, it was very strong uh, movement, so a lot of people got, got involved in occupied movement, punk scene, punk music, uh, a lot of punk bands in the Basque country. And from the very, very beginning, there started to be also some punk bands singing in Basque language. At that moment, there was no even a, a rock band singing in Basque, maybe one or two. So some of the first bands uh, singing in uh, Basque and playing rock were punk bands, like Archanyak, Sarama, or later on they were Balimbala, Delirium Tremens, and then many others. And that influence continued also in the 19s. Maybe the punk scene developed to some other music styles, also take from new metal and some others, but uh, and then also more band singing in Basque came la later on with some other st uh, styles, but it had a, it always had a, a big influence of of that uh, punk uh, movement. Even today, we still look a lot to those 80s and what uh, that punk scene uh, left us. Now also in Basque literature, there appear some novels talking about those times and that uh, punk culture. But it's more difficult to track that in that uh, connection be between Basque language, especially Basque language, and Basque culture with anarchism. Because the Basque uh, anarchist history uh, was uh, something that uh, stayed uh, hidden. Our, the Basque uh, history was uh, stolen by the nationalist narrative for them all the fight against fascism in the 30s and it was like uh, the so-called gudaris the basque uh, nationalist party uh, militia but most of the brigade fighting were isaac puente who was a basque uh, anarchist uh, the first uh, killed in vitoria gasteiz by, by the fascist troops uh, or the Bakunin <laughs> Brigade, or it was Malatesta, and some others. So there was here uh, an anarchist movement, 
and I was told that many of fishermen and uh, workers in the harbor were anarchists, but it is a history that was never told. So now there are some uh, historians, uh, anarchist historians, like trying to write about it and to recover that that memory. So there is no big connection, but with uh, I let I, I lived my anarchism like it was only my something very personal. Like there was no anarchism around me, because at that moment. Uh, the only connection between anarchism and bus culture was through punk movement. Uh, the CNT, the Union, Anarchist Union, were like uh, coming down um, after, of, of course, 40 years of uh, Franco's dictatorship. So um, most of the people thought that the anarchism was more like something that happened in Catalonia or in Aragon or. In Andalusia or Asturias, but never in the Basque Country. Even there was an anarchist commune, commune in San Sebastian too. Um, the logo of ETA, uh, something funny. The logo was uh, an axe with a snake around it, and that uh, logo was an, uh, a sculpture made in, in wood by an anarchist uh, activist who ran away to the other side of the Basque Country, to the French side of the Basque Country, was a refugee there. And he was living there, and he used to take uh, Basque independentist activists uh, at his home. Uh, and he was uh, made at the sculpture with we an axe with uh, a snake. And he gave the, those young um, activists as a present, and it became the ETA logo. <laughs> 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 he was a Felix Likiniano, who is very. He was very loved here yeah, in, in Basque culture. <laughs> That's a good story. Um, yeah. So, so it's really only in the in the punk scene that you see any of the overlap between Basque culture and, and anarchism. Otherwise, it seems to be um, sort of set aside. And m- maybe it goes the other way too. I mean, I, I guess um, a lot of the Basque cultural activism is is tied to. Um, Essentially, a, a, a independent nationalist campaign. Do, do anarchists uh, are they also suspicious of Basque nationalism? I think that uh, one of the reasons why uh, anarchism and that Basque independentist culture are back uh, they take very well each other is because uh, from the thirties, the most important anarchist. Uh, organization was the CNT, but it was a, a Spanish anarchist uh, union, and CNT was very, always very, and still is very Spanish. The, so Spanish anarchism is very Spanish nationalism, uh, uh, nationalist anarchism, something that they usually don't recognize. So a lot of people here felt like anarchism was uh, connected to that uh, Spanish point of view. So maybe many people feel inside uh, like uh, I met a lot of people that inside feel like an anarchist or something close to anarchism, but uh, they feel that anarchism, anarchist movement is very Spanish. So they get more involved in nationalist movement, left movement. But many of them still keep uh, an anarchist point of view. There's some <laughs> strange balance sometimes there is inside that uh, that movement. That's interesting. Okay. Um, well, let's move on a bit to uh, South America. Um, you moved to Chile in 2009. I think you'd been in Argentina as well. Um, and I think quite quickly you became involved in some of the uh, solidarity activism with the indigenous Mapuche people. Um, uh, in Chile. In Chile, are the punk scene and anarchist movement uh, quite closely linked? Yeah, I found it very, very, very close. Uh, even more than in the Basque country, which uh, in the Basque country there were some punk bands that were anarchists, but it was all bit, uh, taken by independentist movement, uh, mainly. But uh, in Chile, I found a, a punk scene that reminded me a lot of the 80s in the Basque country. And a lot of uh, Mohawks and the style, very, very punk style, and a lot of pogo and concerts. 
But that movement was much more connected to anarchism than, than it was here. I would say that almost completely connected both to anarchism and also to Mapuche struggle. There was also a big uh, solidarity feeling with uh, Mapuche people. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the um, struggle of the Mapuche people and, uh, I don't know, did, did you feel some resonance with that struggle coming from a uh, repressed culture yourself? Yes, of course, and it's something that you cannot uh, avoid when you know about it. I didn't uh, know much about Mapuche people when I was living here. There was a uh, Femi Muguruza, a Cortat, a very well, mythical punk singer here in the Basque country, has a song in Basque, uh, Mapuche Ak, talking about Mapuche, but in fact, that was, that was my only reference when I moved there. So, and I didn't know even that they were between Chile and Argentina. I didn't know where Mapuche lived. So, when I started to connect with uh, Chilean people, I, I had a Chilean girlfriend, a student, and close to anarchism, and and from the beginning of our relationship, she started talking me about the Mapuche, the repression against Mapuche. She started to send me videos of that police repression. And then from the beginning, I started to write some articles in my blog about that uh, repression against Mapuche. And I, I found many parallelism between uh, repression here in the Basque country and in Mapuche country. Also, the use of language. Here, Spanish uh, government used to talk about the Basque problem, so the problem were Basque. And in Chile, they talked about the Mapuche conflict. So mm -hmm. the conflict was to Mapuche, so not a, of colonialism yeah. <laughs> conflict. So uh, there were many, many connections, and also the Mapuche people, I think it was very natural uh, connection. Also because of the language, the Nayad language, a language that they did try to make disappear both the Basque language and the Mapuche language. Uh, so there are many things that uh, make you feel a lot of solidarity and a lot of interest. Of, uh, but there, the repression, the political repression is much harder, much harder than here. It's real, really like uh, a war, mm. but uh, in the side they have stones and in the other side they have tanks. So it's very, very hard how they enter their communities with children. They don't care about anything. In, really wow very dramatic mm. i mean uh, we've seen some of that um uh, dramatic repression being waged against uh, the protest movement um obviously there have been waves of protest in in chile across uh, decades and centuries but it seemed to reach something of a of a high point um just before the uh covid19 uh pandemic restrictions came in um you were in Chile 10 years ago. How does the um, protest wave now relate to your experience 10 years ago? Yeah, I think that it was the start of in past October. I think it was around the 18th of October, the start of all those protests and riots. And I think that they are um, they come from, from what I knew there and even from movement that started start before. In fact, I couldn't expect that so general reaction and so big protest because uh, I found a, a Chilean society that was pretty conservative and the Chilean police carabineros that comes from uh, very repressive times from Pinochet you know, dictatorship and was the most valued institution in Chile at that moment. So it was very respected uh, institution. Uh, but at the same time, there were a lot of uh, protests, uh, especially students. Uh, students, uh, I think that they really uh, were the leaders of all protests, were students. And their anarchist movement was very, very involved. So there was something there. Uh, when I was there, there was something there, both Mapuche fight, a student fight, and the protests were very violent. You could uh, then realize that there was something in people that really wanted to destroy everything when they wanted to protest. Mm. <laughs> uh, but, but it seemed difficult to me to become so huge, so general. So for me, it was like amazing, like, wow, finally, finally, they, they, they woke up and they are fighting. <laughs> Yeah. 
And what do you think the um, future prospects of, of, of that struggle are? I mean, obviously, um, pandemic lockdown has, has changed the dynamic, but uh, have the um, have the grievances behind the protests, have they, have they gone away? Have they been dealt with? Uh, I know there are still... They, they st- are still looking for ways to protest. And of course, in all these uh, struggles, there are always different levels. There are some people working for uh, um, self-organization, horizontal ways, and assemblies, and uh, direct democracy, or that, that kind of things. But I would think that most of them are just uh, looking for a new constitution. Uh, a referendum for a new constitution that's, and that with that everything will be more or less fine for, mm. for a lot of people. So I really think that this pandemic process was used by government to, to stop something that they found no way to stop because there were many months with a lot of people killed, a lot of people who lost their eyes and and anyway, people stayed in the streets protesting, and there was no way to, to stop that. So I think that uh, now they are taking advantage of this uh, of this moment, uh, moment. Even there were some Mapuche occupying some uh, uh, t- like town hall, like municipalities, mm-hmm. uh, in protest because there are some um, uh, also some uh, hunger strike, very harsh hunger strike. But now, for the first time after that pro- protest uh, movement, the left, the right wing, organized, and a, a civil right wing uh, movement uh, coordinated with the police, with the Chilean police, went to take those Mapuche out from the town halls with the sticks, bo- uh, stones, and everything, hitting them, and with the police protecting them. And I think that they could do that because now a lot of people must stay home. Uh, there are not so uh, so many people in the streets protesting, so they had like uh, the way free for them to go against uh, the Mapuche people. Mm. Because during this protest, oh, another thing that uh, that was a lot of people realized of what Mapuche people were suffering for years. They experimented in themselves. They realized how repression was every day for Mapuche people. And also, uh, they used to criminalize the black bloc, those uh, first line that usually were anarchists. Uh, and now during this process, protest uh, process, that first line became like heroes, like they are the ones who are defending the rest of the... So th- that uh, violent part is defending the, the peaceful protest. We can uh, protest peacefully because they are fighting there in the first line. Yeah. So they were like a change of conscience for a lot of people in Chile. And I hope that it will be for a long of time. I, I hope it won't die. But, I mean, you, your campaigns had some success um, recently. I think it was uh, December last year in 2019. Your uh, case was agreed to be admissible to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Um, and I think you're the first person who's... Um, not from the Americas to have a, a case admitted to there, um, so you know congratulations on on that. Um, what what would that mean for you personally then if you succeed in 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 that in having that case heard and, and if you're successful at the end of it, what would change? Well, I think personally it won't change many things that I could get to be out of the Interpol list. That would be important not to be officially a, a terrorist <laughs> uh, but for me it's more uh, to get a victory over uh, the state repression that symbolic victory for me is, is important uh, not to give up in, in that uh, way but uh, same time for me, it's not so important if uh, a commission or a judge or whatever said if, if I am guilty or innocent. No, I don't believe much in those those terms. Uh, even if uh, there was someone who really put those bombs 
I wouldn't want that person uh, in jail, and I would think he's guilty of anything. He can be responsible of his action, not, not more. But uh, so personally, I think it's not so important. Even sometimes I'm tired of it, and I would say, "Wow, what I'm doing this for?" But I feel more like it's a responsibility for for other people, because especially Mapuche people. Usually they are they don't have a l much money. I don't have much money. For me, this will be very. Sp I don't have the money I need for this process. In fact, I, not far away from from it. But uh, I'm closer, <laughs> maybe than some that maybe ma many Mapuche fighters can be to support all this uh, like that that kind of process. Because my lawyer will have to travel to Washington, which means flying to Washington living in Washington and you know that he won't pay all the, that stuff from his pocket mm -hmm. I must have to pay for that so it's the, they that's one of the tricks of the system that justice is justice <laughs> their justice is for that who can pay for it so they are very long process so they find that most of the people just abandon and give up so the campaign is more to for visibility, uh, I always try to point more than in my, uh, of course, I must uh, talk about my, my, my case. It was, uh, it was, I'm supposed to do. But for me, it's more important to point to the situation in Chile, mm. the Chile situation for Mapuche, for anarchists. Now, again, two anarchist activists were arrested again and put in, in, into jail. They were in jail here in Spain, because they were in, in Chile, here now again in in Chile. Chile ha, has a very long tradition of a repression against anarchists. It comes it can from the 20s. Uh, they, uh, how do you say, uh, deported a lot of anarchists in the 20s. And it's always that, uh, that uh, of uh, introducing uh, foreigner ideas. Mm -hmm. comes they they use that that sentence in my <laughs> file that I was introducing the foreigner <laughs> ideas mm -hmm. young people Chilean young people so I think that it's more to fight against that kind of fascism uh, and it's a way the legal way not the one I, I like the most I would prefer not to to walk this path because it's, uh, it, it goes against uh, a lot of things that I that I really feel, believe, think. What can people uh, watching or listening, what, what can they do to support your campaign? Sometimes I mean, even... Sometimes it's even a, a problem for me. Uh, being sincere, sometimes it's a problem for me to ask for support. Uh, what I am supposed to do because I think that there are so many things that are more serious than mine, that are problems much bigger than mine, and we cannot support everything happening around the world. So sometimes just to know that there are people there that uh, they sing for, uh, in, in the website, that they sing that they support you, that's a personal level, and also for my family and for people around to know that there are people supporting me, that's a, a, a spiritual support <laughs> is important. But of course, if I must continue this, uh, this course and, and get to uh, and get to defeat the, the, go the, the, the Chilean government, I also will need uh, financial support. So the, my lawyer was telling that it, will, it would be important that uh, some kind of uh, human rights institution or organization from Europe get involved in this to, to make that kind of support. Many things that I'm not very comfortable <laughs> but that, that I must, you know, I must ask for them uh, because that's the strategy, the defense strategy, but sometimes it, for me it's a bit uh, uncomfortable to, to move in, the, in those waters again like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, you know, from from Basque institutions to from uh, the uh, from Basque government, uh, they are asking for help, and they it's like, uh, 
is the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the enemy, but I you know. <laughs> but I, you know, it's, it's very difficult to deal with all those things that uh, you would never want to. <laughs> Bye.